Howdy friends, how's it going? Friday afternoon here on the farm, just taking a quick breather to bring you a couple thoughts before I get back to digging garden beds and folding laundry. That's the life of liberty right there. Uh, I heard two gentlemen talking today on the uh, radio about how convenience is masked as oppression and it was such an interesting conversation I felt like a fly on the wall to. And they had some really valid things they were talking about. Basically how, whether we want to admit this or not, we basically exist in a neo-fascist state wherein, you know, a uh, big corporate business has basically bought our government to do whatever they want it to. And the talking heads that are our presidents and our senators and our House of Representatives and whatever, those people are behind the scenes are like little puppets for the CEOs and CFOs of these big businesses and they are therein getting into where information exchange is, so higher education, so that they can uh, donate money to these universities which will do the studies that help the regulatory agencies make uh, their laws uh, so that these big businesses can continue to exist and make more profit uh, with less regulations than where they currently existed. And what they have done over time is continue to make life easier for every facet of life. And the example I'm going to use here is farming. And I saw this uh, graph that a gentleman had made from Canada, which I'm only I'm merely guessing that the United States looks very similar and it started in the 1920s basically where the profit of farmers and the price of profit of the farming industry so like the people that make farm equipment and the people that you know the the, the business side of things and it was one to one the price of land to the profit of farming you could basically play it pay off your land in a couple of years and then it followed at the same scale for about the next 20 years and then at about 1940s it started to really take off where industry really started making a profit and farmers stayed the same in fact went under a few times and so what's happened is we've marketed and made so many things that have to exist for farmers to have to have that new tractor the more technology in the seed the more antibiotics the more whatever they have to have for their animals that farmers didn't use that long ago where they turned a profit and the price of beans that farmers can take it to the elevator and get paid for well that hasn't gone up much since the 30s and 40s either yet the price of machinery and the price of seed has gone up over 400 percent and so the convenience for making things easier now that we've got air-conditioned cabs and GPS in our tractors where we can turn around and know where we're going, really it's masked itself as more oppression because I hear ag lenders who will send me messages and, you know, where farmers are buying more land just to service their debt, which means the size of your farm doesn't necessarily signal more success it's just what farmers are doing whatever they can to survive it's not about getting ahead anymore because the industry has cheapened food and everybody that goes for food is looking to cut coupons and find things on sale so they can get that new that next deal find you know cheaper 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 they have cheapened the existence they have made secular what used to be sacred Food used to be a big deal. So sacred. Now we'll gather around a bag of Doritos that is the most secular, I mean, the most secular things to gather around. And we put this in our bodies, which on the inside of our bodies, from our mouth to the exit, do you know if we roll that real estate out on flat land, that's it. That's enough real estate to take up two tennis courts. That's how much real estate the inside of us has in contact with information and food is information about the outside. It is not energy. There's more information in food than there is energy. How do I know that? Well, when our mitochondria 
those are the little batteries in all of our cells that make energy. They run more off of sunlight, two thirds off of sunlight than what they do food. Crazy. The other interesting comment about how convenience is masked as oppression is in things like education where we have cheapened uh, the value of our education. Why? Because there is no scarcity anymore in a college education because it has lost its value because there are so many of them available now. Everybody's got, uh, you know, the, the undergrad is the new high school diploma. Now a master's degree, and it's just going to continue. The more we cheapen the existence of that, the more valuable things are is one of the variables is how rare is it? How rare is it somebody has a college education today? Not very. That's why you find people at Starbucks with an undergrad degree. It's lost its value. And so therefore in education, the same big businesses that have uh, bought our government have also bought our education because they're the ones making those big monetary donations to the higher universities, which pay the money, very little money to the professors, which are doing whatever they can to do to make it. They're not getting paid much, even though they have the highest education because of the prefix on their name. They are now the ones that are making all the studies writing all the articles to favor big business, however they choose it to say, cherry picking. So think about today, all the things that you have that are a convenience and see if you can peel back the onion and see if oppression is just right behind the first layer. Ask yourself if it's making you more free. All right, well I gotta go, buddy man needs me. See ya.